Module 7. Hypothesis Testing with One Variable In the realm of statistics, hypothesis testing is akin to being a detective, investigating claims using evidence, data, and logic statistics. In this journey through hypothesis testing with one sample, we'll demystify the process and empower you with the tools needed to make data-driven decisions. Let's imagine we have a producer who claims their batteries last 10 hours on average. As a discerning consumer, you want to test this claim. This scenario sets the stage for our exploration. A. Stating hypotheses. At the heart of hypothesis testing are two opposing statements, the null hypothesis, often denoted as H0, and the alternative hypothesis, denoted as HA or H1 in our battery example. The null hypothesis would be H0. The mean average, which we'll call mu, is 10 hours, signifying the claim. The alternative hypothesis might be that our average is not 10 hours, indicating a belief that the batteries do not, in fact, last 10 hours on average. Understanding Errors Every hypothesis test comes with the possibility of making mistakes. We can either mistakenly reject a true null hypothesis, which is a type 1 error, or we can fail to reject a false null hypothesis, which is a type 2 error. The probability of committing a type 1 error is denoted by alpha, often called the level of significance. Commonly used values for alpha are 0.5 or 0.1 indicating a 5% or 1% chance, respectively, of committing a type 1 error. Choosing the right test. Now, depending on our suspicion about the producer's claim, we can opt for a one-tailed or two-tailed test. If we suspect the batteries last less than 10 hours, our alternative hypothesis would be that the average is less than 10 hours, necessitating a one-tailed test. However, if we're just looking for any difference, either more or less, we'd use a two-tailed test with our HA of the average being not equal to 10 hours. Imagine you gather data and find that, based on your sample, the average battery life is 9.5 hours with a standard deviation of 0.5 hours. You'd then compute a test statistic, which in many cases would be a z-score, and compare it to a critical value. The p-value, which represents the probability of observing your results, or more extreme, assuming H0 is true, will guide your decision. A small p-value, typically less than alpha, would lead you to reject H0. Making and interpreting decisions. If our p-value is less than our significance level alpha, we would reject the null hypothesis. In the context of our battery example, rejecting the null hypothesis means we have enough evidence to contradict the producer's claim. Conversely, a larger p-value suggests that we stick with a null hypothesis. Crafting claims and delving into details. Post-analysis, you'd craft a claim about the test, such as based on our sample, there's sufficient evidence to reject the producer's claim that the batteries last 10 hours on average. For z-tests, the p-values and critical values come from the standard normal distribution. By comparing your calculated z-score to critical values, or by finding the probability associated with your z-score, your p-value. You can determine whether to reject the null hypothesis. Remember, rejection regions in the distribution are areas under the curve where, if your test statistic falls, you'd reject the null hypothesis. Let's look at an example. Suppose a coffee shop claims that the average amount of coffee they pour into a cup is 240 milliliters. You suspect they might be pouring less than this on average. To test this, you randomly measure the amount of coffee in 40 cups from this coffee shop. Note that this is a one-tailed test, since you're only worried about the coffee shop pouring in less than 240 milliliters. If they're overfilling the cup, you don't have a problem with that. From the sample, you find Average amount of coffee per tested cup is 238 milliliters. The standard deviation of the 40 measured cups is 15 milliliters. We want to test the null hypothesis that the average is 240 milliliters or more. The null hypothesis is that the average amount of coffee the shop pours is greater than or equal to 240 milliliters. The alternative hypothesis is that the average amount of coffee the shop pours is less than 240 milliliters. Note that since it's one tail, the alternative hypothesis has a less than sign. If it were two tailed, 
The alternative hypothesis would typically have a not equal to sign since it wouldn't matter which direction the hypothesis was off. The next step is to choose a significance level, the alpha. Let's choose a common significance level of 0.5, which means you're looking for 95% certainty. This is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it's actually true. Now, we can compute the test statistic. Our standard deviation of 15 needs to be divided by the square root of 40s since it's a range we're dealing with, as we discussed last module. 15 divided by the square root of 40 is about 2.37. That means that the standard deviation that we're going to us is 2.37. In our case, the measured mean was 2. 2 divided by 2.37 is about 0 0.84, which means our measured average of 238 milliliters is about 0 0.48 standard deviations below the mean. Looking at the Z-table, to achieve 95% certainty on a one-tailed test, you'd have to be 1.65 standard deviations away from the mean. Since our mean of 238 milliliters is only 0 0.84 standard deviations below the claimed volume of 240 milliliters, we can't be 95% certain that the coffee chops claim is wrong. We, therefore, cannot reject the null hypothesis. In plain English, based on our sample, we don't have sufficient evidence to claim that the coffee shop pours less than 240 milliliters of coffee on average. Let's look at another example. An agency states that the mean annual salary of engineers is $75,000. A survey of 108 random workers finds a mean salary of $73,500 and a standard deviation of $3,400. At a confidence interval of 95%, is there enough evidence to reject the agency's claim? Explain. To determine whether there's enough evidence to reject the agency's claim using hypothesis testing, will follow the same steps as before, but with the updated sample mean. The null and alternative hypotheses are, the null hypothesis is that, the mean annual salary of engineers is $75,000. The alternative hypothesis is the mean annual salary of engineers is not $75,000. Note that, unlike the previous example, this is a two-tailed test, since we're just asking whether the estimate is wrong, it can be wrong in either direction. For a 95% confidence interval, the significance level, alpha, is 0.5 or 5%. Since the sample size is greater than 30, it is 108, we use the z-test for the mean. The sample standard deviation of $3,400 must be divided by the square root of the sample size, 108. That gets us about $327.17. In actuality, the difference from the mean is $1,500. This $1,500 is thus 4.58 standard deviations below the mean. Looking at the Z-table, we see that 95% confidence for a two-tailed test required more than 1.96 standard deviations from the mean. This exceeds that threshold by a lot, which means it falls into the rejection region. Since the test statistic, 4.58, is far greater than, than the critical value, 1.96, we reject the null hypothesis at the 5% level of significance. There is enough evidence to suggest that the mean annual salary of engineers is not $75,000, as stated by the agency. Simply put, the sample data provides evidence that the mean salary is less than $75,000. In our next module, we'll turn to hypothesis testing with two variables.